Um, the next one is like the argument from counterfactuals. Um, so yes. I'm curious, can you talk about like what's going on here? Okay, cool. So uh, this one, I think, uh, this one and uh, the last one were like originally proposed by Alex or proposed by Alvin Plantinga, but built on by other philosophers. This one was built on by Alexander Proust. So, you know, it's going to be good. Um, so this one, a counterfactual is a statement like if X, then Y. So like if I was taller, then I would be happier. That's the one I'm going to go off. Of, I'm going to use for this scenario. So w what makes that kind of statement true? So what we imagine is that we, the antecedent of it, tr um, if I was taller, we pick out a world, a possible world where I am taller. Then we see if the consequent is true. Am I happier in that possible world? Now, the problem is, is that there are a ton of possible worlds where I'm taller than I am in the actual world. There are like infinity of them. And in some of those worlds, I'm going to be happy. Some of those worlds, I'm going to be tortured to death. So there's like a wide variety of these possible worlds where the antecedent holds. So you need some way of choosing uh, one specific possible world so that we could uh, talk about in that possible world is th uh, the one where the con we're looking at whether or not the consequence is true. So for example, we look at um, the the possible world that's the most similar to the actual world where the antecedent holds. The world that's the most similar in as many respects as possible, but I'm still taller. Now, the problem with that is that um, oh, there's a lot of weeds to get into here, but it, that's not very easy to do. It's not very easy to just fi um, find a world that's the closest to ours because which world is closest to ours is a very difficult question to answer. Like I'll give another example. If Queen Elizabeth I was alive, she would be scratching at the inside of her tomb. Okay, why why think about or the inside of her coffin, I mean. Why uh, we might why think that's true? Well, you could think of a world where Queen Elizabeth the First never dies, or you could think about a world where Queen Elizabeth the First is born later. But the world that's closest is actually one where Queen Elizabeth I was just resurrected just now in her tomb, arguably. And if she was just resurrected, she's inside of a coffin trying to figure out what's going on and is trying to get out. So like trying to pick the closest possible world isn't always really clear what we have to do. We can also just imagine like, um, say, and here's an, another example Alexander Proust gives four like iron balls, all roughly the same size, but like they differ from like by like a nanometer. And I could say if um, one of these balls was made of gold, then it would be the one on the far left. And that uh, might be the closest possible world because that ball just happens to be the smallest of the bunch, but that doesn't seem like the reason why that counterfactual should be true. Hmm. Okay, so how do we get around this problem? Well, what Alexander Proust um, points out is that, hey, our words aren't defined um, completely by us when we use them. Sometimes we appeal to um, experts on a given subject. Like when I say, this iguana is a reptile, what I, I don't really know what the word reptile means. I'm not a, um, an expert in taxonomy, so I don't know what classifies one thing as a reptile and another thing not as a reptile. But I do know that it's a reptile. Um, the word reptile has been defined by experts who have the authority to make this definition. And even though I've never met those experts and I have no idea who they are. So what Alexander Proust says is, okay, if you could have experts defining words, as long as they have the authority, you know, without people ever having met the expert, maybe God defines words. He, he like ultimately defines words with a s amount of precision that allows us to always pick out one possible world in our counterfactuals. Like he has an infinite, God has an infinitely complex definition of taller so that when I say, if I was taller, then I would be happier. The word taller picks out the one specific possible world that would, roughly would be required for our purposes in our everyday use of uh, these counterfactuals. And this kind of idea of God picking out words, uh, the definitions of words with infinite precision also has use in other domains. Like if we could talk about um, your, your food is hot, like you just made some dinner and you put the pizza on the table and it's hot, then that proposition, your food is hot, over the course of the night, if you just leave it untouched, it's eventually going to be false. But is there like at one specific millisecond where it goes from true to false? <clears throat> where it goes from true to false? Well, um, on this view, yes. And you might think that's weird, but we have a perfectly legitimate explanation. God defined the word hot so specifically that um, there's a very specific instant where it's true of, goes from being true of your food to being false of your food. You could also think of other examples like 
I have a beard. Maybe Zach um, never shaves for like the next couple of years. At, the, at some point, he's going to have a beard. So it's going to be true that Zach has a beard. But right now, it's false that he has a beard. Presumably, the resolution might be too low on my camera. But it doesn't look like you have one. <laughs> not yet. Okay. So is there Hopefully like some not ever. Yeah, is there some specific nanosecond where it goes from being false to being true, where uh, Zach has a beard? Like there's one cell that releases just enough amount of protein so that his hair is long enough to that uh, in totality he has a beard. Well, on this view, you know, God defines the words just, you know, specifically enough um, and technically enough that our, wor our sentences always have uh, meanings. And that's pretty cool. And if you don't accept this, then you're either left with like these propositions not having meanings or your or, or sentences like oftentimes being making meaningless just utterances without propositions attached to them or you're going to have to like throw out classical logic like you could say like you know there are these degrees of truth to our sentences like it's half true that zach has a beard at some points or and then it becomes fully true later on or it's like one third true at other times but that's not how logic works logic just deals in truths and falses other things that uh, you could do is say that our sentences are meaningless, but then it's like, okay, is that meaningless? Like you have to, um, you have to say that our sentences express propositions, it seems, uh, hmm. but if it ex uh, expresses a proposition, then what truth value does it have? Yeah, that, that's my spiel on that argument. Yeah. So, so it's interesting just again here trying to like map it out a little bit, like from my um, never hearing, hearing the argument before perspective, like, so it's talking about this idea of like, where well, we can have these propositions where it's say like squared is cold right now. Um, and at mm -hmm. some point then, well, event, there'd be a point where it's like, well, that proposition would be false and square would actually be hot based off of like a counterfactual of like, well, now it's like 73 versus like 65 inside of his giant mansion that he's living in right now, right now. Oh yeah. Um, my amazing so giant mansion. <laughs> um, so like with these propositions, like we would have to be some sort of like grounding then for these propositions. Yeah. Um, and the grounding is, is the free will of God. Yeah. The grounding is mm -hmm. uh, God's free will and how to use them. And he would, um, if you think that there's like a, uh, best way for them to be defined, like to say match up with uh, the way we use them. You think that's the best way for words to be defined? Well, then you know God's omnibenevolent, so He's going to do that. So, and for the words to be most useful and whatnot, 